Hi, in this video I'm going to cover an anti-join merge. And this is basically something that we can do in Power Query where we are looking at two tables and we want to bring back results from one table for values that are not in another table. So it's kind of a reverse lookup in a way. And how can we use this? Well, here's a use case. Let's say you own a network of European, <laughs> European car repair service centers and one target customers of certain cars for the service specials in the mail campaign. However, there are certain cars that you don't want part as part of this campaign. Here we have these four Volvo make and models and from these years that we do not want to, in our mail campaign. We see we have this other table here, year, make, model, the VIN number. These are probably cars that got serviced and we want to send out mailer for the customers next time to have them come in for service, but we don't want these four type of year make model cars. So we get a recurring list. Maybe we get this list daily, weekly, however, and from the service centers, and we want to automatically remove the cert these certain four cars from this list on our final list that we would use for our mail campaign. So this is something that can be accomplished with an anti-join merge in Power Query. This is familiar for people that are that are versed in database uh, design, but you can also do this in Power Query. So what we're doing is we're looking for things that aren't in another list. This is actually fairly easy to do in Power Query. Now, let's say in our data, we've got, I think this is 500 records. Control down arrow, yeah, 500 records. Control up arrow, go back. And I want to bring this in to Power Query to do my list and get an output that would remove any of the items here. So you can see if I looked at some of these items, Volvo, oops, it made my table disappear. Let's get the table from here. Control C to copy, Control V to paste. Uh, we have our list up here. We have Volvo XC90. That's not here. Where's our other XC90? Oh, XC90 2003. That's, we want to get rid of that one in row 110. Also for 2003 Volvo S80, 2003 S80, it's not here. So we don't need to get rid of that in this table. C70, 2006, C70, C70, it's a 374 here. We want to get rid of that one. And Volvo V70. Volvo V70. There is no V70 in this list, so we don't have to worry about that. All right, let's get rid of this. Delete. And get rid of that filter. So we're going to get rid of two items from this list. Ooh, look at that. Let's delete that. Select. Delete. All right. So we're going to bring this into Power Query and get rid of those two records that are here. These are already tables, and you know that it's already a table. Let me click outside. Is when I click inside, you'll see this table contextual menu come up. Same for this one. Click outside, it disappears. Click inside, table contextual menu comes up. Now, first off, we want to turn this into table. Usually, Power Query is pretty smart. If you want to go from table range, you'll create a table from you. However, some, sometimes it doesn't work well, or if you like to use the table feature, you can go to insert, table. It's grayed out right now but it will take your range of data, turn into a table, and you, you'll see that table contextual menu. But since these are already tables, I'm just gonna bring it into Power Query. Go to data, from table. I'll take the default table name, this is table one. Click close and load, and just load this as a connection. By default, my, my particular set settings in Power Query will load it only as a connection. So I'll, I'll click okay. Do the same thing for the second table here, uh, data, from table, this will be table two. Let me make this a little smaller so it'll fit. All right, so this will be table two. Click close and load. It's, already, it's a by default going to create it as a connection and it'll do it by there because my, my particular setting is connection only. Most settings in Excel or the default setting in Excel is to create a table and bring it out here. But I have it set to create a connection only. It'll, so what I need to do is take this table, that query, and reference it. Right click, reference. And I'm going to merge it now. So in the Home tab, go to Merge Queries, 
and I'm going to merge this query with table two query. So this is table one query. I want to merge the. I want to look up with these three values or column headers: year, make, and model. Press the control key. Year, make, model. Now you notice it puts numbers in the column headers here, so that's going to be the first header value that the first value I'm going to look up, second and third value. The table I need to look up is table two. Do the same thing. Control, year, make, model. So in a way, it's going to combine these column um, values to do the lookup and look up against table two's column values or those values within those cells. The join kind I need is a left anti-join. So it's going to bring back the rows only in the first. So it's going to look at these rows. If it finds a match to that, those rows with those column one, two, three, it's going to discount them or remove them. So it's only going to bring back anything from this that doesn't match anything from these three. That's what the left anti-join does. So you can see here, it's already told you, it has matched two out of the 500, what we saw earlier. Click OK. And if we want to see further evidence of that, we can expand this table. This is basically a table that it's brought back from the other table. You can, so for 2005 BMW 74, it found nothing from the other, from table two. That's why you have these nulls. I can expand this and you can see that it's pretty much no for all the other values because it didn't find anything. I, what I can do now is just right click, remove these columns. I don't want to have it in my final output. And I'll close and load. And in this case, I'm going to close and load as a table in this sheet. Go to table, existing worksheet. Let's put it over here in cell J1, click OK. And this could be my sheet for my mailings. You can notice that out of this, these values, it should be less than 500. It should be, I believe, 488. Control Shift down arrow, and, or 498. And it counts 498 values because it minus those two values, right? Those two values that it found for those two Volvo values. Now, this is really instructive because let's say that we had to do this all over again and we didn't have. The next day or next week, this these set of values or records disappeared. Control down arrow, delete. And we have new values to put in there. Control shift down arrow. Cut. Control X to cut. Go here. Let's just paste the values. Paste the values. And we can run this again. Right? Let's see, let me go all the way down. Oops. Let me go all the way down, down some more. These are a new set of 500 values, and they're different. You notice they're different, right? The first value was BMW Z4, and now we have it disappeared here. If I looked at the Volvos, you know, I need to bring back this again. Control C to copy, Control V to paste. There's only three Volvos in this list, but it will bring back, let's make this a little bit easier to see here. It will bring back, it will, it will not bring back, it will not bring back the 2003 Volvo S80, because it, it has it right here. The other ones, it doesn't care, because it's not going to find a match for them. So it's going to move one record. Let's delete this again, delete that and clear that. So I originally had how many values are 500 values. Control up arrow. In my final output list, I should just have 499 records instead. So if I go under data, all I need to do is just refresh all and it will get rid of that Volvo uh, 2003 SAD. Let's see where it, where it is. Let me see where it is again. Volvo S80. It's in. It's 150. So 150. So it's gonna be uh, right before the 2005 Chevrolet Suburban 1500. So 
the record above that is going to disappear. It's going to be two Chevrolets instead of a Chevrolet. It will vote between the Chevrolets. So we'll go to data, refresh all, because the beauty of Power Query is that we don't have to do it all over again. Since this is a small table, all I need to do is probably just refresh all. I can have it will refresh all my queries. That's okay because this is not a lot of data. So I'll just click refresh all. It's going to look at that and it's going to bring back 499 rows. So it got rid of that Volvo here. And all I need to do is look for my go to row 150 around there. And if those two Chevrolets are together, it got rid of it. So we have our Volvo here. And we look here, we have our two Chevrolets, the Suburban 1500 and that Volvo S80 2003 was taken away. And it only left me with 499 records. Right, so I got rid of whatever was in uh, this table. So it's looking for values that are not in that table and brought that back. So that's the power of Power Query because if you have something that is on a recurring basis, daily, weekly, or you've got a lot of data, this actually helps you to do and automate that. So if you're in a situation where you have two tables and you want to bring back data from one table but exclude data from another table, Power Query, the anti-join, is probably something that will help you out. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.